How's it going, everyone? My name is Michael SK, and welcome back to Matsutsumi. And I swear to God, I am not pronouncing that correctly, and I don't think I ever will. I can only try, and that's, uh, that's the best I can do. So, back at it again, we are touring the town. Very lovely looking town, very, uh, very peaceful. Not too busy, but not too quiet. I think the perfect place for Makoto. Uh, and during this tour, we are going to be meeting... A friend. I I don't remember I don't remember names other than than our main character. Uh, what is the name of the person we've been following around? Kokoro. How dare I? How dare I forget her name? Uh, we're gonna be meeting her friend, whatever her name is. Apparently, it is her best friend. And if I remember correctly, this person's pretty interesting. Uh, and I think this episode will be the last one of content that I have uh, gone through. Hopefully. Hopefully after this one, it is uh, it is blind for me as it is blind for maybe some of you. So let us continue our tour. We're here at the lake, or wh whatever this body of water is. Most places in town are close to the waterfront, so it's easy to find the lake no matter where you are. Eh, there we go. But that also means that when someone says they're at the lake, it might be pretty hard to find them. I want to help look for Kokodo's friend, but I have no idea what she looks like. What a beautiful lake. I gaze out onto the water as we walk along the shoreline. I know about oceans, and I know this isn't one. But still, I've never seen a body of water this large. Sparkling in the summer sunlight, the water looks more indigo than blue. Yeah. Oh, I want to see that too. I decide to come back here around sunset if I have time. By the way, you said your friend was kind of weird, but what did you mean? Oh, everyone's a, a little weird, and, and never in a bad way. I mean, look at me. I'm weird, but not in a bad way, right? Right? What's her name? Minazuki Hotaru. There she is. So, so. Huh? I'm startled by a third voice that suddenly butts in. Oh, Hotaru? Hotaru? The new girl hugs Kokoro. I didn't notice her approach us at all. So, Kokoro and Hotaru. The two of them aren't hugging anymore, but they're still holding hands. Those are some cute nicknames. Before Kokoro can react, Hotoru turns to me and smiles. Her smile is somehow different from Kokoro's. It's not that it's a forced smile. How do I put it? If Kokoro's smile is like a sunflower, Hotoro's or Hotoru's is more like a lily or an iris. God damn, I fucking hate vowels. Uh, anyways, it's nice to meet you too, uh, Minazuki-san. Hotoru de ni desu yo. Hotoru wa ne, sakki shoukaishita byoin no ojou sama nan da. I am trying to figure out what the hell I got on my mouse pad. It's like really bothering me. Like, what did I do? Did I do something? Now I've got questions. I'm breaking the mold here. Kokoro declares this proudly. Eris? I see. Okay, so you know what? While, while I'm still breaking the mold, I got a new monitor. And, of course, this is the title that I thought, Hey, you know, I should give the new monitor a shot with this. This is quite literally the first thing I booted up. And, uh, everything is bright. Compared to the preview that I'm getting on what used to be my primary monitor, everything is too bright. I need to, like, fix that, because goddamn. <laughs> It literally does not affect you guys at all, but it's affecting me and my poor eyes. 
These anime girls are just too bright. Super duper. Flippy snippy. Please don't have me repeat that part. Oh shit. Okay, okay, what? Yeah, that's right. I nod in assent. I guess she was testing me in some way, but I don't sense any ill will from her. It's fine. I, I don't mind. I smile reassuringly at Kokoro. She doesn't know about my Kododama power or the location of the village, so it's fine if she tells other people about me. And anyway, I had already decided to trust her completely. My trust in her informs everything I do now. Hotaru has been observing me since she last spoke. Wait, how are we a knight in shining armor, though? Have we done anything? I don't have amnesia. Kokoro looks happily at Hotaru. Are we even a grown man? Like, we've been called a boy multiple times, haven't we? Huh? What's a koala? Well, I'm afraid I don't really know what the definition of a good person is here in the outside world, so I can't really say. If you're asking whether I've had I've ever had sex with a woman, then yes I have. Coco <laughs> God damn it, I forgot about this part. Kokoro's face goes beet red as she looks back and forth between me and Hotaru. I scratch my head, not sure what's gotten into her. Uh, is there something bad about me not being a virgin? Oh, it's a double-edged sword. Well, this might be pretty bad. I look at Kokoro to see what she thinks of the whole thing. But she seems to be frozen. I have no choice but to ask Hotaru. Hotaru, do you think I should leave Kokoro's house since I'm not a virgin? I see. It's true, Kokoro is a very cute girl. Yesterday and today, I've been totally focused on all the interesting new things I've found in this town. But I'll probably get horny sooner or, sooner or later. I mean, it's... It, it happens. It, and not just to guys. Like, it just... It's it's a human thing. It happens, okay? Honestly, I never thought about how I would deal with my sex drive once I left the village and didn't have mana by my side anymore. I guess you're right. Well, there goes all the potential H scenes with her. That makes a lot of sense. I should just do that. Uh, okay, I didn't realize. I don't know much about homosexuality, but I've heard of same-sex couples. But wait, since you're both girls, you can't have children, right? I don't think that's how it works, biologically, though. Really, I guess that would make sense. I mean, women do have wombs, Maybe it would be harder if you were both men. I can see that. I can see that too. Yeah, kind of. There's something about both of you that gives away that you're virgins. Hey, I'm cool with it. It's, uh, it's, it's different compared to everything we've gone through so far. Kokoro loudly interrupts us. I'm startled by her outburst. Huh? 
<笑>どうしてそういうこと言うのうんあのねむしろ今までココロンがこの人に男性を意識してなかったことにホタルはびっくりだよ不思議な人を拾った何かのお話が始まったみたいってメルヘンしてたけど親友としては常識的に心配なんだわココロンは大きな声で言うと。Uh, what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> Kokoro is mumbling to herself. But my ears perk up at those words. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's an easy solution here. Do you want to forget about me? I don't quite understand what's wrong, but I can tell that the conversation I had with Hotoru has made her uncomfortable about me as a person, so I'd be happy for her to forget it as well. Alright, here we go. Yeehaw! It is magic time. Kokoro, Hotoru, I'd like to tell you something. I draw their attention to myself. I choose my words carefully and speak them as a Kododama. Forget everything we talked about from the time Hotaru asked whether I was a virgin until now. In an instant, the deep blush vanishes from Kokoro's face. She starts looking around, surprised. I don't know what her memories rewrote themselves to, but it seems she's forgotten the virginity conversation as desired. Hotaru looks, or also looks surprised. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. That's strange. What Hotaru's saying, it's like she's continuing the conversation normally, like she remembers Kokoro wanting to forget. That shouldn't happen, should it? What? I stare at Hotaru in、uh, consternation. Yeah. She stares right back at me. No, nothing like that. Oh, but I do think you're very cute too, Hotaru. Oh, come on. Azuki san said that to me too. I wonder what it means. I don't really get it, but if you're talking about what I'm wearing, I borrowed these jeans from Kokoro's house, the shirt too, actually. I think we got really off topic there. Surely I'll need to change into pajamas when I go to bed, but Hotaru seems to have reached some kind of conclusion, so I leave it at that. Kokoro is confused. I'm pretty confused too. Did my Kododama not work on Hotaru? I wonder how that could have happened. I thought I said it loud enough so that both of them could hear, but maybe she didn't hear me? Or maybe I didn't word the Kododama properly? Unfortunately, I don't remember exactly how I phrased it anymore. Well, whatever. My main goal was to make Kokoro forget, and if I try to question Hotaru about it, things could get complicated fast. <laughs> You really trust Kokoro, don't you? I was thinking earlier about how my trust for Kokoro informs everything I do now, but it seems that Hotoru feels the same way too. And if that's because they're best friends, maybe that means Kokoro is a best friend to me too. My first real human relationship. This is so exciting. Kokoro is a human being. I'm 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 a human being. Oh, I need that.、Uh, what would the bad in me be anyway? Hotaru has been smiling this whole time. But at my simple question, she suddenly looks serious. Goma, Hundo, Sitto, Taida, Goyok, Bosok, Skiok, Gayume, Kana. Wait a minute, I thought there were only seven deadly sins. 
You're telling me there's other things I had to worry about this entire time? Oh no, there's more shit. Oh, these are the good things. I think. Yeah, it seems like it. Thank you. That helps. I didn't understand even half of what she said, but I'm grateful that she took my question seriously and answered it so thoroughly. Still gazing at me, she whispers softly. What a strange character. Oh, oh, now she's getting a little weirder. But you know what? That's what makes her interesting. Color. Well, that's what I want to understand better, I think. I recall what I was thinking about the night I left the village. She trails off into a whisper, and I can't hear the end of her sentence. We both fall silent. Kokoro seems exasperated at the two of us, but to me, talking to Hotaru has been a revelation. There's still so much for me to learn in this new world. Back to being upbeat, are we? Now I kind of get what Kokoro's saying. Hotaru is not easy to understand like the characters in the books and manga I've read. There's something else mixed in there. I do have a cell phone now. Sure, please feel free to text me too. Hotaru suddenly begins to sway gently from side to side. Hotaru turns and leaves without saying, without even saying goodbye. As she walks away from us along the shoreline, she looks like she's out for a stroll, and had never stopped to talk to us at all. A very stressful day. Is she always like that? Yeah, uh, she she seems like the character that we really need to get to know. Like, obviously, we need to learn about everyone we're coming across, but most definitely her. Kokoro doesn't seem to really un uh, to really know what she's saying. I can hardly blame her. I don't know where to start either. Let's roll with that. Could be. I don't have much prior experience talking to people, so I'm not sure whether Kokoro's theory is right, but... Hmm. I wonder if this is uh, the type of game where our choices will dictate what kind of color we become. And then maybe we'll get some cool color text or something like that. Those words stood out to me, too. What did she mean by that? It's too late now, but I should have asked her in return, then what color are you? Yeah, maybe we should have. But it's okay, it's whatevs. Or is it? The lake had been the last place on Kokoro's list, so after meeting Hotaru, we came back home. It was just around noon, so we had lunch at the cafe. azuki san made us a dish called... Omur... Is it Omurice? Or is that something pronounced differently? I, I have absolutely no idea. A divine combination of fluffy omelette and golden fried rice. I'm assuming that it is pronounced with the rice in there, because, uh... Come on, it's got rice. After that, Kokoro went out again, saying she had plans. Azuki-san says she trained me for my part-time job at the cafe, so I've been waiting in my room until she's ready. To kill time, I'm flipping through a dictionary. Part-time job, diet, privacy... Aha, I knew it. The capital of America is definitely Washington, D.C. I hear a voice calling me from the hallway. 
I put the dictionary away and go downstairs. There's nobody in the cafe except for Azuki-san. Oh yeah, you know, that's that's completely understandable, to be honest. Of course, I don't mind. She hands me an apron, which I put on. You were gonna teach me how to make drinks today, right? Got it. Under Azuki-san's supervision, I prepare drink after drink from Cafe Origami's menu. Black coffee, Cafe Olai, or however you pronounce that, hot cocoa. I choose different tea leaves depending on how the customer takes their tea, straight with milk and sugar, etc. For carbonated drinks, I bring them a glass full of ice and open the bottle. For floats, I put the ice cream in the glass first and then pour the soda on top. Oh man. That brings back some very unhealthy days. I most definitely cannot have ice cream and floats and milkshakes as often as I did. I don't even know how I, you know, was able to as often as I did back then, but... Yeah, uh, I would love to do Pepsi floats. Not root beer floats, I would do a Pepsi variant. And I would just, like, work super hard to mix the ice cream and the Pepsi together. And the taste was just, mmm, it was good. It was, it was nothing else added, it, it was just those two things. Nothing else included, and it was, uh, it was bomb. But no, I most definitely could not have that, like, on a very regular basis. Maybe once in a blue moon? But, uh, that's pretty much it. Azuki-san moves down the row of drinks I've prepared, trying a sip of each one. She looks unusually serious. Was there anything I did wrong? I feel a little worried, but when she's finished tasting my creations, she smiles at me. All I did was follow your instructions, but thanks. I'm not sure whether it's the right reaction, but I thank her for the compliments. Oh, uh, sure. No, uh, well, honestly, I'm sorry to say that my taste buds might be really different from everyone else's. I'm not sure I can make food that people here would enjoy. I thought they were delicious, but you and Kokoro didn't seem to react very strongly. How did they taste to you? Right? I gave it some thought. If Western foods taste the same to you and me, maybe it's only Japanese food that tastes really different for, uh, between the village and here. No, actually, Kokoro was kind enough to make me an onigiri last night, so I ate it first thing in the morning and, well... <sighs> Azuki-san nods to herself. <laughs> oh, darn tootin'. I'm sorry. <laughs> Please forgive me. I can only keep apologizing. What kind of ingrate would complain about food they were served as a guest? But her severe expression fades. To be totally real with you guys, I am most likely the worst, like, cook in my family. I burn water. I don't you know, heat it to the point where it evaporates or anything like that. I just straight up burn it. I, I burn things that should not be burnable when it comes to cooking. It is very not good. It, it's actually very concerning. So you're saying that taste I experienced was something specific to the food Kokoro makes. Oh, I see. Thank heavens. No, I really mean it. 
I had started to worry that if Kokodo's onigiri was what I, was considered normal around here, I might have to pack up and return to the village to avoid dying of starvation. I'm not sure, but it was it was bright red and goopy and sweet, but also sour. Jam. She's muttering to herself in horror. How do I put this? I'm starting to understand why there was an open position at Cafe Origami. Not only is Azuki-san a single mother, not only is she in poor health, as Kokoro was telling me, but on top of all of that, her only daughter's incredible talents are, well, not quite the right ones you need for working in a kitchen. Azuki-san, please rest assured that I'll work extremely hard, I swear to you. <laughs> oh no, time. Time is, is tight now. She chuckles, her gaze lingering on my face. What is it? She breaks off. If she had continued, I wouldn't have thought anything of it, but she remains silent, and an awkward pause ensues. I guess she was starting to say something, but decided not to. She turns to the door, trying to change the subject. No customer arrives. Is there something you wanted to say about me or boys generally? I think to myself, Azuki-san is hiding something, and I want to know what it is. But it's not just idle curiosity. She and Kokoro saved my life, so I want to do something for them in return. Maybe if I find out what's troubling her, I could help. Please tell me. I speak the Kododama gently. She looks disoriented for a second, and then smiles uncomfortably. So... It was a miscarriage, huh? So that's devastating. I mean, I hear about it here and there with, like, public figures and, uh, not necessarily people around me directly, but, I mean, you gotta feel for them. They really put themselves out there to be a parent, and they get denied it for whatever reason, whether it's health or whether it was the wrath of God, it was something, and it's absolutely unfortunate. And from a guy's perspective, totally, like, unrelated to these people, you can only feel bad that a life that was meant to be never got to be. Sorry, I like to ramble. I see. A son who died before birth. The elder brother Kokoro never had. Now that I'm living here, it stands to reason that I'd remind Azuki's son of him. It's alright. I'm the one who asked you to tell me, after all. She frowns in puzzlement. Even the power of Kododama isn't able to bring people back from the dead. Because it works through speaking and listening, it's physically limited to effects that can be carried out by the human body. For example, I can use Kododama to make someone stop feeling hungry, but I can't actually fill their stomach with my words. But in terms of mental effects, there's practically no limit to what I can do. Though I can't resurrect Azuki-san's lost son, I could probably make her believe that he's alive and standing before her. But I guess that wouldn't solve anything, and it would probably it probably wouldn't make her happy anyway. Yeah, to to make them believe in something that's not real, I think that's just uh that's one of the worst things you could do. Let us never go in that direction. The front door opens. An old couple comes into the cafe complaining about how hot it is outside. <laughs> Azuki-san welcomes them with a smile. Then she looks to me. Welcome. I greet the old couple nervously. Serving customers is a scary but exciting new experience. Time to put my training into practice. I bring them water, ask for their order, and make and serve them drinks they requested. It's not hard at all. 
The couple are engrossed in their conversation and don't pay me or Azuki-san much mind. We move to the kitchen so as not to disturb them. After about 15 minutes, the two of them pay their bill and leave. As I watch them go, I nod to myself. So that's how it goes. You serve food and drinks, and in return they give you money. It couldn't be any simpler. Sure. Back in the village, families with large fields would ask for help during the busy harvest seasons. In return, the helpers would receive a portion of the harvest. Since I lived by myself and had a small field, I participated as a helper on many occasions. Please do. Kokoro said that she was worried about your health, so I'd be happy for you to be able to rest more. Azuki-san smiles gladly. It would be better if more customers did come, wouldn't it? ね。呼び込みも兼ねてこの格好で私が店の前の掃除をしたりもするんだけど。アドバイス。美味しい飲み物や料理がありますよ。喫茶店ですぐんで行きませんかって歩いてる人に声をかけるの。このお店を魅力
But then she said that she was going to sleep early and retired to her room. That's a good thing, right? You're welcome. If Kokoro is happy about what I did, it must have been the right decision. I don't think I'm that kind of god, actually. Oh, well, nothing. I am he who speaks bane but a word, boon but a word. I don't think that's quite as simple as a god of good fortune. Kokoro's tallying up the receipts now, and I decide to change the subject. So I see you know how to do accounting. I do know addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. I learned the four basic types of arithmetic back in the village. But what I actually wanted to ask about was your school. It's one of the many things I want to learn about. She happily bounces out of her seat and sits innocently right next to me. She's like a wild rabbit. Those are good to eat if you roast them. Alright, good to know, I think. Everything? She puts a finger to her lips, trying to think of where to start. Okay. Okay. Wow, you know, even I can tell that you aren't trying very hard. Maybe it's something like how working in the fields feels to me? Well, the main point of working in a field is to have food to eat. But if you ask me whether that's so the, the only reason I did it, I don't think it is. I guess the thing is that you can't really understand until you've been in the field yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's why, ex and that's exactly why I left the village and came here. I wanted to really understand what it was like in the outside world. I did, and was prepared for the worst, but luckily I met you and Azuki-san. You've been so nice to me that I feel like I leapt directly into a warm embrace. I smile as I think over the events of the last few days. Somehow, whenever I'm talking to Kokoro, a smile comes naturally to my usually stony face. By the way, I take a couple of sniffs. You smell nice, Kokoro. She started, or she's startled as I lean towards her neck, excuse me. She turns red and shrinks into the sofa. But she's not trying to escape from me. I guess it's okay? Nothing, you just smell good. It's true, you do smell good. Is this a smell of your shampoo, maybe? We didn't have shampoo in the village. But I've been using it since I came here, so I thought I knew what it smelled like. And yet, somehow it smells better on her than it does on me. As I ponder the meaning of it, Kokoro moves away from me a bit. What are you so shocked about? Ah, come on, that's nothing. Oh, I see. That's news to me. Mana never seemed to mind when I did it. In fact, she often did it to me and said that she liked the way I smelled, too. Oh, well. Well, maybe once we figured out, uh, once we figured out what sort of age we're maybe somewhat around, it'd be cool to maybe, you know, go to school and learn. Ah, right, I forgot that she's a virgin. Oops. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm starting to get a little horny. Oh, no, no, no. We gotta, we gotta calm down there. Hotoru was telling me that I would get kicked out of the house if I ever did anything with Kokoro. But if she wants me, maybe it's still okay for me to sleep with her? After calming herself down, Kokoro moves back towards me. 
まことくんはなんかお兄さんみたいな気持ちでいたのにドキドキしちゃったよ。A big brother. うん。さすがに私よりは年上だよね。Probably. We didn't pay that much attention to people's ages back in the village though. へえー。それじゃあ誕生日のお祝いとかしないの We just, counted our, we just counted ourselves one year older at the beginning of every new year, excuse me. Well, we did. She smiles gently. It's not the same kind of smile as Mana's. Now that's a request. What? I. Don't understand, but as requested, I place my hand on her head and stroke it. <laughs> I feel like I'm stroking fine silken kimono fabric. Kokoro giggles. <laughs> Your head is just on the small side. So? I think I could get a nice good grip of it with one hand. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't. <laughs> でもでも、今みたいなちょっと意地悪な話し方とか、やっぱりお兄さんっぽい。I didn't have any siblings, so I wouldn't know. Mana didn't have, or Mana did have an elder sister, but no, I'd rather not think about that right now. あ、もう頭を撫でなくてもいいよ。ありがとう。Are you sure? オッケーオッケー。なんならお返しに肩でも叩くよ。I think Azuki san could probably use a shoulder rub more than me. So d o n e Why did you suddenly want me to pat you on the head anyway? Eh? I'm not going to do it. Pretend I did not do that. She looks puzzled. I need to be more than a little bit. Oh, okay. I wonder. Azuki san said I remind her of her stillborn son. So maybe Kokoro is reminded of him too. It doesn't really feel that way though. She smiles, blushing. I think so too. I look up at the lamp on the ceiling. The sun has long since set, but inside the house it's as bright as noon. Back in the village, once the, sun's, the, once the sun went down, there was nothing to do except sit alone in my house in the dark or go to sleep. What a way to live. But it never made me feel sad or lonely. It was the only nighttime I knew until just a few days ago. My thoughts are disturbed by a high pitched sound. Kokoro looks in the direction of her room. I see, it's a sound that notifies her that a text has arrived. Okay. Good night. After we ended our conversation, she disappears into her room. I guess she didn't want me that way. I feel very, I feel very slightly disappointed at the realization. Oh well, I can live with it. I'm still, totally,、uh, I'm still totally fascinated, excuse me, by the new world I've come to, and excited to interact with the people here. Sex can wait. Still, I can't wait forever. I should start thinking about how to make sure this dry spell doesn't go on for too long. I could always use my Kododama to put Kokoro or Azuki san in the mood, but that feels a bit wrong somehow. There are ways to deal with desire by yourself, but I never really got the hang of that. I never needed to. Well, I guess I'll sleep on it. The clock shows 10 p.m. In the village, I'd only ever be up this late if there was some kind of special event going on. Oh, this poor guy. Having to, having to sleep on and figuring out how to nut properly. Got it. Gotcha, man. I head back to my room, too. I get into bed right away, not bothering to turn on the light in the room. I feel restless, but I have to try to sleep. As I lie here with my eyes closed tight, my mind starts to wander as I think back over the day. It was only my second day in town. Early in the morning, I went to the shrine and saw a shrine maiden there. I had pancakes for breakfast and o m e r i c e for lunch, both delicious new experiences. In the afternoon, I had Kokoro show me around town and even got to see the front gate of her school. Then I met a mysterious girl named Hotaru. Hotaru. That's right, it, it almost seemed like my Kododama didn't work on her. But is that actually possible? I'm not sure. She wanted to text me, but I haven't received any texts from her yet. 
Maybe she wants me to text her first? Eh, no, I don't really want to do that. I'd rather try to find a good time to meet her. Or try- a good time and meet her in person, excuse me. Anyway, after I met Hotoru, I came back to the cafe and I learned how to make drinks from Azuki-san. And I learned about how Kokoro almost had an elder brother, but he was stillborn. Siblings. The word escapes my lips unbidden. I don't have any family left since I was an only child and my parents both died when I was young. But maybe my life would have been a little different if I did have a sibling. Yes, I probably wouldn't have thought to leave the village by myself if I had a younger brother or sister to care for. Or maybe I still would have left and brought my brother or sister along with me? Without warning, I hear the old familiar voice again. I haven't heard it since I left the village. Why has it come back now? Maybe it's telling me I still have more places to go and things to see. Well, I can definitely think of one or two, school for example. I want to learn absolutely everything I can learn about uh, everything there is. Maybe that's just who I am deep inside. Entitled, impulsive, greedy. Haha. <laughs> I smile to myself. I can tell that my face isn't physically smiling, but I can feel the sensation of it inside as I break into laughter. Wow, we are just straight up laughing. This is fun. God, this is so fun. It's been so long since I've been this excited. So excited I can't sleep. It feels miraculous to know in my bones that tomorrow will be wonderfully different from today. You know what? Actually, I think I'll be able to sleep just fine tonight. After my laughter dies down, I lie happily still, thinking of nothing. Now that I'm out here, I can do anything I want. There's no need to be impatient. Yeah, you go get him, tiger. You go do what your heart desires and whatnot. That's what it's all about. Okay, so I think we are absolutely on the cusp of, you know, me going blind yes. uh, moving forward. So, like, there's, like, a teeny tiny bit here, and then that is it. After that, we are in the uh, in the new territory for myself, and I feel like my commentary will be for the better after that. At least that's the hope. I, I really want to, you know, experience as much as I can blind, but, you know, this, uh, this is a little bit of a weird circumstance. But we'll save it here, and we will uh, we'll see what goes on in the in the next episode. Probably the first five to ten minutes I'll know what's going on, and then after that, totally brand new. I'm pretty uh, pretty excited for that, and I hope you all are as well. Thank you all for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that fancy jazz, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.